The largest ever cabinet of ministers in Barbados gets down to work. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for today, Monday, May 28th. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. 26 new cabinet members began work today in Barbados after being sworn in at a public ceremony on Sunday. It was historic, just like the Barbados Labour Party landslide win and Mayor Martley's appointment as the island's first female prime minister. It's the largest cabinet of any government and it was the first public swearing-in ceremony. The ceremony came three days after the Martley-led BLP's 13-0 win at the polls. The newly appointed prime minister promised that the new cabinet will be one of ideas, problem solving and action and she assured that she would be holding each minister to a very high standard she said the hallmarks of her cabinet would be accountability transparency fairness discipline and unity Motley says the walk to a new economically stable Barbados will be long, but promised that hope will be translated into action, adding that there is no time for pause since there is serious work to be done. Some of the main ministerial portfolios were distributed as follows. Prime Minister Motley will hold the portfolio of Minister of Finance, Economic Affairs and Investment. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs is Dale Marshall. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade is Senator Dr. Jerome Walcott. And Kerry Simmons is Minister of Tourism and international transport. A number of foreign and regional dignitaries attended yesterday's ceremony, including the Prime Minister of Grenada, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And with the absence of an official opposition, Prime Minister Motley has indicated plans afoot to reform the constitution to allow for the main opposition party to name two people in the Senate. Those senatorial positions are being offered to the DLP as the party that gained the second highest number of votes in the election. Motley says in the event that the DLP fails to take up the offer, the Governor General will appoint two senators acting in accordance with the advice of the Prime Minister after consultation with various stakeholder groups. We have discussed the need for an urgent amendment of the Constitution to allow the opposition political party securing the highest number of votes to recommend two appointments to the Senate because we believe that even though there has been no official leader of the opposition, my government would wish to have accommodated the views of the main opposition party that secured the largest amount of votes. In this instance, we are effectively speaking about the Democratic Labour Party. It is only fair to the country that therefore those amendments be made to be able to secure their voice rather than to have them absent from the Parliament of Barbados. Meantime, Motley says Barbados will remain as a member of the Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCJ. She says the Trinidad-based court represents one of the best examples of independence in a court across the entire globe. Motley says she had, as Attorney General, the responsibility for chairing the preparatory committee for the court. She says Barbados perhaps has one of the largest number of cases in the appellate jurisdiction, and Barbadians, as a rule, have seen their rights been protected by the Caribbean Court of Justice. Former Prime Minister Frandel Stewart during his election campaign signaled his intent to remove the island from the CCJ should his party be elected in the recently concluded general elections. His comments triggered criticism from around the Caribbean. Trinidad and Tobago's anti-gang legislation went into effect today. The cabinet has issued instructions to President Paula May Weeks to proclaim the Anti-Gang Act 2018 that will give the police power to pursue and prosecute all members of criminal gangs. The Attorney General's office in a statement on Saturday said the instructions given to the President follow written approval from the Cabinet, the Judiciary and the Police Service. But Opposition Leader Kamala Prasad Bisesa said she wants to see if the anti-gang legislation will help the crime scourge in the country. We get more in this C News report. Leader Kamala Prasad Bisesa said that with the anti-gang bill going to be in effect, she wants to see if the Attorney General and by extension the government will continue to blame the opposition for the crime rate. Blood on my hands, blood on UNC hands. 
we pushed for it since January. We said, let's come back. They took a while to bring it back. We passed it. We gave them what they wanted. And the bloodshed in this country is now worse than ever. I think it needs to explain that delay and not try to put the delay or the blame on the DPP and the Commissioner of Police. That's the impression I picked up yesterday. That will not give him the cure-all and the panacea for the crime wave hitting the country. But they wanted it, they have it, let's see how it works. As it pertains to other laws, Prasad Bissessa said the AG promised to pass over 80 pieces of legislation and to date he hasn't reached that figure as yet. Follow the money, follow the money, follow the money, I think from day one. And we are yet to see the legislation in the parliament and or implemented. A lot of things um, they promised to bring. I think in this first year, fir their first year, they had promised, I think, near to 82 pieces of legislation. They have brought far less than that. I read it out on Friday. In the second year, so much. They're way behind in the famous legislative agenda. So we have to wait to see when he does it, when it will be brought. But they're way behind in that legislative agenda. And so follow the money, yes. I hope they'll follow the money. Um, A.V. Drillin took the best seat, the friend of the Prime Minister. I hope they're following that money. The anti-gang bill provides for the suppression of associations created for unlawful or criminal purposes and to provide for the enhanced protection of the public. The bill defines gang as a combination of two or more persons, whether formally or informally, organized to engage in gang-related activity, and gang leader means a person who initiates, organizes, plans, finances, directs, manages or supervises a gang. One of Trinidad and Tobago's senior judicial officials has been arrested and charged with driving under the influence. He is High Court Judge Kevin Ramcharan. He appeared before Port of Spain Magistrate on Monday to answer the charges. Justice Ramcharan appeared before Magistrate Dwayne Murray, but the initial charge was not read as the police prosecutor made an application to amend the charge. The matter was adjourned to July after attorney Keith Scotland said the judge's lead attorney, senior counsel Gilbert Peterson, was out of the jurisdiction and would want to make submissions regarding the request to amend the charge. Justice Ramcharan was arrested and charged following a vehicular accident in St. Clair near midnight on Saturday. Police say the judge failed a breathalyzer test. Ramcharan appeared in Magistrate's court today, charged with driving under the influence of alcohol. However, the police prosecutor made an application to amend the charge. Justice Ramcharan appeared before Magistrate Dwayne Murray, but the initial charge was not read. The matter was adjourned to July after attorney Keith Scotland said the judge's lead attorney, senior counsel Gilbert Peterson, was out of the jurisdiction and would want to make submissions regarding the request to amend the charge. Justice Ramcharan was arrested and charged following a vehicular accident in Sinclair near midnight on Saturday. Police say the judge failed a breathalyzer test. Dominica's Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has warned of possible legal action against Dominica State College as he criticized its decision to bar students from writing exams because of arrears to the institution. He said that by mid-June, his administration plans to settle all outstanding owed by students up to May 2018. The Prime Minister said the $1 million EC dollar payment to the college will clear the arrears, but he said the practice of the state-owned institution not allowing students to sit their final exams because of financial problems is wrong. It is morally wrong, it is ethically wrong, and it is illegal. And if they continue to do so, I will instruct the Attorney General to sue the college on behalf of the students of Dominica and to hold the President, Dr. Peters, personally liable because they should never be sending students home, not allowing them to sit their exams. There is, my friends, there is no college, there is no university in the world that does that. And coming up in Caribbean Newsland, predictions of a further reduction in poverty in Jamaica. The details of that story and more after the break. Stay with us. Follow your heart to the 22nd Annual St. Kitts Music Festival from June 27th to July 1st, 2018. Featuring Kester Band, Simba Lundy, Small Axe Band, Nyla Blackman, and Betty Wack. Also, Patti LaBelle, Dijon, New Vibes International, Rhythm of the Beat, and Wayne Wanda. Fight, August Alpina, Aishana, Byron Messiah, Dasha, Shaka Dimas, and Flyers, and Miss Lauren Hill. Save the date and book now for the 22nd Annual St. Kitts Music Festival, an experience like no other.
Welcome back. The Planning Institute of Jamaica is anticipating a further reduction in poverty in the country. In a recent media brief, the Institute said it is in the process of preparing the statistics for 2017, but preliminary information suggests it will follow the recent trend when poverty fell from 20.1% in 2015 to 17.1% in 2016. We get more in this report. The decline was reported in Staten's Jamaica Survey of Living Conditions. It represents a 19% drop in the incidence of poverty, the largest annual reduction in 10 years. Among the factors contributing to this is higher employment levels in the country. Data from Staten reveals a 3.1% drop in the unemployment rate for January 2018 when compared to the same month last year. Most of the decline in unemployment has been noticed, observed since 2017 into 2018. Remember, we're reporting on 2016 now. So going forward, that is when you're going to see the, we're expecting to see a, a more sharper decline in the poverty rate. The PIOJ's Senior Director of Economic Planning, Research and Policy Logistics was speaking at the Institute's recent quarterly media briefing. Going forward, Director General Dr. Wayne Henry says the PIOJ will be examining the multidimensional nature of poverty through the poverty reduction policy that was launched earlier this year. So it's more than just if people are working, you're looking at conditions that lead to persistent poverty and to, to, to empower um, in terms of um, the, the households um, in the, to lift them out of poverty and, and hence the need for targeting in terms of um, social protection and, and economic empowerment. The Guyana government on Monday said there's a strong possibility that hackers may have deliberately set out to change the configuration of the Guyana map showing the country without the Essequibo region during last weekend's celebration of 52 years of political independence from Britain. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said it is looking into the apparent cyber attack. Copies of the maps first appeared on advertisements by American Home and Beauty Center and later on the Facebook page of Jobs GT and the website of the government-controlled Guyana Chronicle newspaper. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed its deep concern over the disturbing image that depicts Guyana without its known internationally recognized borders, insisting that the appearance of the map during the independence period was not coincidental. Guyana and Venezuela are engaged in a decades-old border dispute, and the matter has now been referred to the International Court of Justice. Still in Guyana, a report released on Monday shows that a significant number of prisoners say they have suffered physical abuse at the hands of police officers in a bid to get them to either testify or change their testimonies. The final report of the Guyana Prison Service Inmates Survey showed that several violations had been committed. The document published on the website of the Ministry of Public Security stated that almost four out of ten inmates said they had been hit in an effort to compel them to testify or to change their statement while at the police station. The report raised questions about the behavior of members of the Guyana police force towards inmates, noting that officers do not always fully respect the civil and human rights of detainees. It comes at a time when the police force is receiving kudos for an upsurge in confession statements that interrogators say they obtained from detainees lawfully. The report calls for a review of the performance and behavior of police. Over in Haiti, the Ministry of the Interior 
and territorial communities on Monday expressed concern about the disappearance of the mayor of the commune of Estere, Senke, estimably. He has been missing since May 23rd when he was seen walking towards the capital. In a statement, the ministry urged citizens to remain calm, especially the residents of Estre who had ransacked public buildings in reaction to the unexplained disappearance of the mayor. The authorities have already launched an investigation into the matter. It said a team from the ministry has also visited the commune. And ahead in Newsline Sport, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister tells Cricket Australia exactly what Caricom thinks about West Indies cricket. Stay with us. Sport is next. Do you wish to combine a vacation with your laughter? Then St. Martin is the place to be on June 22nd and 23rd for the 14th annual edition of its comedy festival, Laugh Till Belly Burst, with comedians from all over the world. Book hotel and show tickets until June 20th now at www.ltbbsxm.com. It starts from sunrise, a city filled with an island vibe, music, people, color, friendship, culture, and the warmest of smiles. Come enjoy the unique costumes, pulsating steel pans, exotic culture, exciting fets, and unforgettable people. Discover Antigua's Carnival, the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, July 27th to August 8th, because the beach really is just the beginning. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley has conveyed CARICOM's position on West Indies cricket to Cricket Australia following a meeting in Melbourne. Rowley, a member of CARICOM's Prime Ministerial Subcommittee on Cricket, met with Cricket Australia's Chief Executive James Sutherland along with other executive members last Friday. He was joined in the meeting by his Foreign and CARICOM Affairs Minister, Senator Dennis Moses, and Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister and Minister of the Ministry of the Attorney General, Stuart Young. Rowley and Cricket Australia also discussed the role of West Indies cricket in the development of the game in Australia, while agreeing on the need for the Caribbean side to return to a dominant position in international cricket. Further, Cricket Australia committed to supporting any efforts to help West Indies cricket in the future. Rowley, who has been publicly criticised of that he's been publicly critical of Cricket West Indies management, also discussed the role of cricket's world governing body, the International Cricket Council. CARICOM is set to meet with the ICC during the T20 Women's World Cup in November to also convey its position on West Indies cricket. Olympic champion Shauna Milawibo of the Bahamas crushed her. She crushed her opposition to convincingly win the 400 meters at the Prefontaine Classic on Saturday. In the third meeting of the IWF Diamond League at Hayward Field, the 24-year-old cruised to a time of 49.52 seconds after dominating the last 200 meters of the event. Running out of lane four, Milawibo made progress down the back stretch as American Phyllis Francis and Shakima Wibley showed early. Milweber came off the turn level with Francis 50.5, that's 50.81, but pulled away to leave the field in her wake and crossed the line without a challenger. Milweber rises quickly 
and already is closing down on a colo outside her started very fast indeed miller Weibo. phyllis francis also going well in the white in lane six so it's the world champion against the olympic champion to this first 200 meters miller Weibo just checking back perhaps a little bit into the wind down the back straight wants to perhaps attack it to the second 200 not much to choose between them phyllis francis chasing down wimbley out in lane eight but it's phyllis francis the world champion with Milo Weibo now starting to eat into that lead. Wimbley still going well, but it's Milo Weibo starting to come away. Judge this really well, finishing stronger than anybody else here. And Milo Weibo is going to win this by a country mile. Watch the clock, 49.51. Well, in these conditions, that is superb. That really is superb. And also making podium finish was Jamaican Omar McLeod, who took the 110-meter hurdles in a time of 13.01 seconds. The Olympic champion was pushed all the way to the line by second place, Shege Shubinok, 13.08 uh, American Devon Aline, who was second in 13.13, and Spain's Oland Ortega, who was fourth. A little bit of a twist from Posse in the blocks, but leaving Posse get out well. But look at McLeod, he's just leaning on Ortega at the minute, but it's he's winning it. Shubenkov right in this as well, and over on the, this side, Devin Allen, but it may well be. Yes, just a falter, but he gets it. The win for McLeod. Shubenkov chased him all the way. Devin Allen had a good performance as well. Uh, watch McLeod, not the best of starts necessarily, but then from then, he's contesting with Ortega, but Shubenkov's got the lead, and just watch McLeod. Just a little bit off balance for me coming off the hurdles there. Again, just a little stutter off that last barrier. And over to Hockey Caymans, Stickwoman dominated a Caribbean counterpart at a hockey festival held recently. Cayman 27's Jordan Aminis has the details. Cayman Field Hockey welcomed members of St. Andrew and Monroe Hockey Clubs from Kingston, Jamaica for a busy day of action on the turf for the 2018 Cayman Hockey Festival. And Cayman's women's team member Julia Meyerhoff says it's a marquee event on the club's calendar. This is the eighth year that we've been hosting this tournament with Jamaica, and we just sent a group, like a team, to go to Jamaica, to Kingston, back in October. And they were excellent hosts, and we love having them here. The ladies hit the field first with K-Man's Sarah Pinches scoring to make it 1-0. Elaine Whitfield added another in the second half until suffering an injury. K-Man held on, though, for a 2-0 victory. K-Man's Kylie Jones says, win or lose, it's a culturally rich gathering. Well, I think the best part about it is it's diverse. There's a lot of people that play for the different teams, different nationalities. So I think it's really fantastic that everyone kind of comes together and plays the, the game, uh, which is the most important thing. Jamaica's Sharnetta Russell says the international friendlies are beneficial both on and off the field. The game is twofold. Cayman host in May and Jamaica host in November each year. And every year I use the event as part vacation, part to network, and part to just reconnect with friends that are here on the island. Of course, it's also part of drinking, part of dancing, and part of playing the game. With Jamaica only traveling with five players, Cayman was well represented on both sides of the men's matches. In the opening game, Mark Williams Williams scored the opener for Cayman, Man, and just a couple of minutes later, Simon Barwick made it 2-0. The second half saw Jamaica's Terrence Chowdhury score twice, with a 2-2 draw being the final. With the Alex Horner Trophy on the line in the final game, Cayman's Man's men got a deciding goal from Mark Williams once again to give them a 3-2 victory, bringing the trophy home to Cayman. Man. And over to football, Trinidad and Tobago crushed Grenada 13-0 on Sunday to win Group C of the CONCACAF Caribbean Women's Qualifiers and reach the final round of the championship. They led 6-0 at halftime at the Otto Bolden Stadium and continued their rampage afterwards to ensure they finished ahead of St. Kitts and Nevis on goal difference after both teams ended on 10 points. Forward Alia Prince netted a hat-trick while Captain Tasha St. Louis, Jonel Cato and Janine Francois and Maria 
Maria Shed all scored braces. For Grenada, the defeat was the third in four outings and it saw them finish bottom of the five team standings with a single point following a 1-1 draw with Dominica last Friday. In Group D, in St. John's, Antigua and Barbuda also booked their place in the final round of the Caribbean qualifiers when they edged St. Lucia 1-0 to finish top of the standings. St. Vincent and the Grenadines had earlier lost the third straight match when they went down 1-0 to Curacao. And in Guyana, Bermuda also booked their passage through to the next round with a similar 1-0 victory over Suriname. Guyana and Barbados drew nil all in the other match at the venue. TNT, Antigua and Bermuda will be joined in the final round of qualifiers by Cuba and Jamaica, who watch won both Group A and Group B respectively earlier this month. The final round runs from August 25th to September 2nd. And that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Follow your heart to the 22nd Annual St. Kitts Music Festival from June 27th to July 1st, 2018. Featuring Kester Band, Single Melody, Small Act Band, Nyla Blackman, and Betty Wack. Also, Patty LaBelle, Dijon, New Vibes International, Rhythm of the Beat, and Wayne Wonder. Fight, August Alpina, Aishana, Byron Messiah, Dasha, Shaka Dimas, and Flyers, and Miss Lauren Hill. Save the date and book now for the 22nd and Walt and Kids Music Festival, an experience like no other. From sunrise, a city filled with an island vibe, music, people, color, friendship, culture, and the warmest of smiles. Come enjoy the unique costumes, pulsating steel pans, exotic culture, exciting fets, and unforgettable people. Discover Antigua's Carnival, the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, July 27th to August 8th. Because the beach really is just the beginning. Again, the major developments of this day. The largest ever cabinet of ministers in Barbados gets down to work, with Prime Minister Mia Motley saying they will be held to the highest standards and will have to declare their assets. And in sport, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister tells Cricket Australia exactly what CARICOM thinks about West Indies cricket after a meeting in Melbourne. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to carnanews.com. We'll be back here again tomorrow, but from all of us at CMC News, Thank you for joining us and do have yourselves a very good night.